Good morning and welcome to SUNUP, I'm Clinton Griffiths. It's usually this time of year when we put wheat harvest behind us and start focusing on next year's crop. But as grain and seed experts are finding out, there are still lessons to learn from the 2009 crop. What they're finding is a fungal disease showing up in parts of Oklahoma where it typically doesn't survive. The 2009 wheat harvest is out of the field and in the bin. As Gene McVeigh, president of the Johnston Seed Company, sees it, it's a miracle there's any grain at all. I must say that I think we're very fortunate to have a wheat crop after the April 6-7 freeze. It, uh, it should have been black and laying on the ground. In the 115 years since W.B. Johnston began his company, there have been a lot of changes in agriculture. But one thing McVeigh and others have noticed in north central Oklahoma in the last couple of years is the emergence of yet another yield robbing disease. It's been sneaking up on us a little bit of, of late and it's uh, Fusarium head blight uh, scab. And uh, we're starting to see more and more of it. And, and the bad thing about uh, this particular problem is the, uh, it, the reduction of yield for the producer. The fungus that causes Fusarium head blight, FHB or scab, infects seed heads during flowering and leaves behind lightweight white kernels. Not generally found in north central Oklahoma, cool wet weather the last two years has helped FHBs survive in the region. We have been familiar with this issue um, as a company, uh, as an industry, uh, because it's been prevalent in southeast Kansas and northeast Oklahoma. Uh, it's only recently become more apparent in this part of, the, of Oklahoma. At extension plots in Haskell and Afton, wet weather and FHB or scab appeared to cause a 50% reduction in yields for 2009. In other northeast fields, it was even worse. It's those kinds of numbers McVeigh hopes early awareness and better weather will help prevent in 2010. My biggest concern is the uh, reduction in yield by the producer. In today's economic environment, we need all the money we can when it comes to wheat. We're joined now by Bob Hunger, a wheat extension pathologist here at OSU. And Bob, we've seen this fusarium head blight in places that we don't normally see it here in Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, uh, fusarium head blight, or FHB uh, as it's sometimes called, has been around the state quite a bit this year, much more so than it has in previous years in Oklahoma. And what causes that? Why are we seeing this more? Well, it's caused by a, a fungal uh, pathogen, uh, Fusarium, that uh, infects the wheat heads uh, during anthesis when the wheat is flowering. And it needs a real specific set of uh, weather conditions, uh, high moisture, free moisture on the plants, as well as cool temperatures, generally between about 65 and 85 degrees. Uh, to get those heads infected with the fungus. Then the fungus goes ahead and develops into fusarium head blight, which causes the problems. Okay, uh, and, and we had those conditions this year in a lot of areas of the state. So if the head is infected, how is it going to impact that wheat head as it matures? Well, the kernels that uh, result from heads infected with uh, FHB are shriveled, chalky looking, sometimes will have a pinkish color with them. Uh, perhaps even the bigger problem is that that pathogen will then produce a number of different uh, toxins, the most common of which is called DON or vomitoxin. Mm. It's uh, those toxins which create the biggest problem in uh, the selling and moving of the wheat after the harvest is done. So what can producers do to check for this or, or know if they have it? Well, uh, of course, at this point in time, the wheat harvest is finished. Uh, during that time after flowering uh, in the field, producers can look at the wheat heads and see if they uh, see discoloration in the head, and then pull those heads apart and look at the kernels and see if they see that chalky white color, uh, pinkish color in any of the kernels. And then, of course, they can always send samples into the disease diagnostic lab at OSU and have them checked for fusarium head blight that way. Okay. Now, is there anything that they can do over the summer and into the fall to kind of get rid of this or break the cycle, eliminate it from their, uh, their property? It'll be hard to eliminate uh, altogether, but one of the keys to this is uh, rotation of crops. 
And rotation is a very good practice in, in growing any commodities, and we've been trying to get growers to uh, rotate crops. Uh, however, one of the potential dangers of having wheat following corn is that the fusarium pathogen will also infect corn, and if you put wheat into corn, residue, the residue produces a huge inoculum load of spores uh, in the spring to infect those wheat heads. Then if you get that right combination with temperature and moisture, you're set up to have uh, fusarium head blight in the, the wheat crop that year. So growers can approach it from that way, be careful about uh, planting wheat into corn residue. Uh, increased tillage, which will get bury that corn residue, will help. Certainly, uh, planting wheat into uh, wheat residue can also lead to some fusarium, but not near as bad. Uh, there are some fungicides that are available that can be applied right at uh, the beginning of flowering that will help protect the plants, but most of those fungicides will suppress the fusarium head blight by somewhere between 30 and 50 percent. Okay, well uh, now we have Sunup's Kathy Shelton here with Jeff Edwards to talk a little bit more about what you can do on your own farm.